Number 431 in your hymnal, 431, I have found a friend who is all to me. I am saved, saved, saved. Let's all stand together as we sing 431 together. Glad I'm saved, aren't you? And uh, good to see you back in church this evening. Appreciate you making the effort to come back on uh, Sunday night when I'm sure that you're pretty tired. And uh, glad you're here. We're going to have a good service together this evening. And let's open in prayer together, shall we? Father, we bow before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for a wonderful morning this morning and for decisions that were made for thee. And thank you, Lord, for Xavier and Felicia and 
membership in our church and thank you for Warner a young young boy obeying you in baptism today and Lord I pray that uh, you'll meet with us here again tonight mm -hmm. Lord we come back and uh, we want to hear from you Lord we pray that you'll bless the music tonight and our testimony time together and Lord honor once again the the preaching of the word of God and Lord give us each individual Lord exactly what they need tonight from this service uh, do what only you can do Lord and we'll thank you for it we pray in Jesus name amen all right you may be seated <clears throat> in your hymnal 334 to Jesus every day I find my heart is tr closer drawn I hope that's the case with you as well still sweeter every day <clears throat> on that first together to Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn he's fairer than the glory of the golden purple dawn He's all my fancy pictures in his fairest dreams and more. His day he grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied this side the golden shore. Oh, hair he'll be so sweeter than he ever was before. His glory broke upon me when I saw him from afar. He's fairer than the lily, brighter than the morning star. He fills and satisfies my longing spirit for and more. His day he grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied this side the golden shore. Oh, than he ever was before. My heart is sometimes heavy, but he comes with great relief. He pulls me to his bosom when I droop with light and grief. I love the Christ who all my burdens in his body pour. His day he grows still sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied this side the golden shore oh there he'll be so sweeter than he ever was before all right now if you
few announcements for us. Uh, Schedule this week now. We'll have Wednesday night for the midweek service, as usual, right here at 7 o'clock. And then remember Brother Moreland's conference, the 1040 conference. Um, that's going to start on Thursday morning. They'll go 9 to about noon, have a lunch, and then he's got, I think, an afternoon uh, session from like 1 to 3. Uh, and then the, the public service Thursday evening, which will be 6 p.m., and you're welcome to come to that, and I encourage you to come to that. Pastor Dennis Leatherman, uh, he's uh, from... Trying to think of the name of his church in Maryland, and uh, they're, uh, they have adopted the country of Kazakhstan, uh, their church has, and uh, they're endeavoring to endeavor to reach that country for the Lord, and uh, exciting things are happening with that, and Brother Leatherman's a great preacher, has a great church, uh, Mountain Lake Baptist Church, possibly, something like that, and uh, but he'll be here, and then um, it's coming to me. I, I should have wrote that down. Um, Pastor up in Loudonville. And nobody has one of those cards with him, do you? Um, I can't remember. I can't believe it. I'm, not, I'm going to blank on his name right now. But uh, he'll be here. Uh, they'll both be preaching that night, okay? Kohler, that's it. Brother Kohler, Pastor Kohler from Loudonville. And uh, they're the one who has adopted um, Iran as a country. And are endeavoring to reach Iran with the gospel and the different people groups and languages that are there. It'll be a great time. And uh, so if you can make free your schedule, uh, be out on Thursday evening for that. Uh, I think you'd really receive a blessing from hearing these men preach on Thursday evening. Okay? And uh, that'll be his conference, and it'll continue on Friday morning for the missionaries and the pastors and such till, I think, noon on Friday. So I know Brother Moreland would appreciate you praying. Uh, if any of the ladies want to give a hand with lunch, uh, get in contact with Brother Moreland. Just let him know that you're available or you'll help any way you can. Uh, I'm sure that he can use the help on Thursday for lunch. Okay? All right, that'll be that conference, and of course, we'll have the normal things that are going as usual. Friday night will be RU, and uh, we'll be at the prison Thursday night, and again on Saturday morning, and uh, then uh, visitation and soul winning, bus visitation usual, Saturday morning at 10, and uh, before you know it, we'll be right back here next Sunday, so uh, just the way it works, and uh, we look forward to another good week for the Lord, all right? And uh, now, we take, looking around, anybody here tonight visiting? Good to see Brother John Combest here, and uh, Brother John, good to have you in the service tonight, and um, he's uh, waiting on Emily to come back, and uh, he's uh, he's a good, going to the Congo, by the way, Brother Combest, and uh, it's uh, we're excited about that, and we're um, trying to work out some uh, times where we'll get to hear from him, and uh, hear what his plans are. Uh, it interests, uh, not only because of the work, but it interests us because... Emily Moreland's going to be a part of that. And uh, so you get, get a chance to know Brother John. He's a good man. And uh, appreciate him stopping in and being in church tonight. That's great. Also, Diane Cato's here. And uh, she's here to spend some time with her mom and Amber. And uh, Amber's on her way to Heartland Baptist Bible College and uh, out in Oklahoma. Uh, when do you leave for there, Amber? Wednesday. Wow, okay. Getting ready to go. And uh, be her first year out there. And... Um, but I'm sure the name, the name Cato is pretty familiar out there, is it not? And uh, you got some good good footsteps to walk in there. All right, and uh, glad that you're in the service tonight. That's good. Okay. Anybody else this evening? I think it's just usins this evening. All right. Well, we want to celebrate an anniversary. Don and Cindy Taylor had an anniversary on August the fourth. They went away last Sunday thinking they'd slip under the radar, but we kept track of them. And uh, we're just going to do it this Sunday, amen, and uh, celebrate their anniversary. And, and I think against my objections, they're going to celebrate ours too. So is my wife in here? Front and center. Oh, there you are. Okay. August I'm looking for you. Right? Ours was the, the, Taylor's is the 4th and ours is the 11th. And um, so we celebrate our anniversary as well. And uh, so, honey, you come on up. Taylor's come on up. And uh, we'll celebrate our anniversaries.
right. Anybody, uh, the folks here that weren't here this morning, and uh, if you would like an uh, anniversary mug, um, we'd like to give you one, okay? Fellas, open that up if you would and put your hand in the air. If you didn't get one today and you're over 12 years of age, put your hand up, all right? Okay, make sure Brother John gets one and uh, Diane and Amber ought to get one. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Everybody set? All right. Isaac, just your blood's going to run out of your arm, okay? Got to wait. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's take a few minutes and uh, let's share some testimonies. Of, uh, just say a good word for the Lord. And um, a good testimony is where it's not about you, it's about God. Uh, it's not where you look good, it's where God looks good. And uh, so just share something good about maybe what the Lord's done in your heart, uh, maybe something from yesterday uh, with everybody coming together, maybe it's something from today, maybe it's just something the Lord's done for you recently and you want to just share it and praise His name and uh, you can share it with us, we'd love to hear it, all right? Who would like to start us off tonight with a testimony? I scared everybody away, didn't I? There we go, Brenda Mann. Um. Okay, you know I had a lot of baking to do, and I, I was kind of wondering if I could carry it through because of my back and, and my RU or RA. And I prayed to God that he would help me and hold me up. And Friday night, it was bearable. Saturday was getting better. And today, I've been in no pain whatsoever. Amen. And that's such a blessing. So, amen. That's great. Amen. That's great. Yeah. That's good. She texted um, She texted me today. Next. And she said, no pain today and no pain medicine today. Uh, zero. So, uh, God's, uh, that's the kind of healing we believe in, by the way. Amen. amen. Where God does it. That's great. That's, that's a wonderful report. That's good. Who else? Share something tonight. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There's Felicia. There we go. I like talking in these. Um, this happened a while ago, but it's very close to my heart. Um, mm -hmm. Since this disappearance of my sister, um, this is really all the credit to the Lord because I went out uh, flyering with a church family um, um, one evening downtown, and we had prayed that God would use that time to burden the hearts of people to uh, not just hear the, you know, hear the gospel, but also to care about this issue of my sister being missing for a year and the blessing was um i was rammed i was in an alley you know passing out flyers and i run into a lady from 10 tv eyewitness news now 10 tv has already done two videos of my sister and i went up to thank them thank you so much for your company helping us you know in this this search and she goes i've never even heard of this let me write this down i'm doing another a story and would love to include your sister and it was just amazing. And she met with my older sister, and they have aired a video um, as appropriate for adults called Innocence for Sale. And we just praise God because I got to say to my older sister, that was the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I was not there by mistake, nor was she. And God allowed us to have more um, time on the air to, to point people to the situation. But God is using it to burden hearts for people who are um, in human trafficking situations, mm -hmm. and um, there are people and ministries all over the world that are reaching um, people in this situation. So mm -hmm. if you just join in prayer for me, her name is Sarah Liberty Curtis, and th that God would magnify himself through uh, this tragic situation. And I just want to thank the Lord for this church because they already um, saw a vision in this situation and took in a burden um, personally. And I really... Um, just praise God that he can bring good out of a very unlikely and uh, almost sometimes a scoring situation. So, thank you. Amen. Good. Good. Thank you. That's good. All right. Who's next? Keep it going. John, want to say something? Go right ahead. 
I just want to say, uh, about a week ago, my dad traveled to Boston. He's a pastor over in Indiana, and he had a stroke while there, and he's been in ICU all week. And uh, today, as of yesterday, they took him out of ICU, and the doctor let him go today and said, uh, it was kind of an interesting thing. Uh, he had one major stroke, but then multiple TIAs every day mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. whole week. And so they didn't think they were letting him go for another couple of weeks. So I was going right. to head up there. And they let him out today, and he'll be coming back tomorrow. So do just praise the Lord. And uh, a lot of the results have already gone away. And the doctor said within a year, he should be right back to normal. So Amen. That's God great. is good. That's great. Good report. Amen. Julie? I want to praise God because I asked for prayer at the RU meeting and Sister Stacy, I believe it was, or one of the ladies suggested I pray or I play the scripture audio King James at night. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, well, I've tried everything else. Let's try it. So I did, and I have slept better than I have in ages. So Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's great. That's, that's great. That's good. Good testimonies. Anybody else get in on this while we're doing it? Yeah, Brother Yoder. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for being a wonderful father. Amen. Uh, we call each other brother and sister around here, but uh, the, the anniversary here of the church, not seeing people for 20 years and visiting other churches, that uh, brothers and sisters that I've never met, but when we're all following Christ the same way, it's just like we've never been apart before, and it's a wonderful thing. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's true. It's good. Yeah. Leanne? I have to praise the Lord tonight that he led me through Pastor and Kathy to Bible Baptist Church because my life has so moved forward and taken steps that I never dreamed would take place. And um, as a result, I've touched many lives through Bible Baptist, but gotten the courage to go out and knock on doors and give people tracts and share with them about the Lord. People that I don't even know, brand new neighbors or whatever, so I have to praise the Lord for that. And in doing so, and coming to Bible Baptist Church, as I said yesterday, I'm seizure-free seven months now, Amen. which makes it possible for me to do so much more. Amen. So i got to praise the Lord for my being in Bible Baptist Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's great. Thank you, man. Good. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Brett Linkey, there we go. Andy. Brett, Andy, okay. Brother I Brett? just want to praise the Lord for a church like Bible Baptist Church. It, it's a blessing to me to know that I met my wife here. Amen. That my kids are here and that we're serving together. Amen. I just thank God for that. We're thankful too, Brett. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Brother Andy? Um, I just wanted to share a little thing that, that uh, was a blessing to me yesterday when I think it was on the testimony yesterday, Jennifer on the right side or stood up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But when she was testifying about the Sunday school teachers and Brother Polovo knocking on our door, and so I just um, was thinking and thanking God for the faithfulness of um, the Wallaces and Polovos and who just stick by the stuff because it's you know, sometimes it's not easy to go and just keep week after week teaching the same class, but um, you stay faithful at it, and you see these Christians who come after so many years, and they remember, you know, I was in Mrs. Wallace's Sunday school class, mm -hmm. and my bus captain, and um, so it just, that that really touched me yesterday, the faithfulness of, of workers here to just keep on Amen. keeping on serving God. That's good. Amen. That's great. That's a blessing. All right. Anyone else? Before we wrap it up? All right.
Come on up, Brother Bob, and uh, get your songbook out. We'll sing again together. Turn over, if you will, to 249. 249, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. 249, you remain seated while you sing. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shattered the spelling with joy I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Won't that last now? Now I've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in hand for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Rich is eternal and blessing supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Well, let's turn over to 91. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Number 91. Let's all stand one more to get time together. On that first. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests.
day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and lead me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be There'll be no sorrow there, no more burden to bear. Let's sing that last together when we get to the chorus. We'll have the instruments drop out on that last. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with that one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who sent me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be amen you can be seated great singing tonight what a day that'll be We'll pray and ask God's blessing on the offering this evening. And uh, Brother Linky, I'd like you to pray for us, please. Thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for all the blessings you've given us today. The miracles we've seen. Dear God, I thank you so much that we can come here on a Sunday night and worship you freely. And God, I pray you just continue to bless the, the ministries here. Lord, be with us as we grow for another more years. And God, I pray you just help us and bless the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, go to Psalm 122, please, Psalm 122, for our scripture reading, and we're going to read the, all nine verses of Psalm 122, and of course we'll read them responsibly, we'll begin together on one, and I'll read two, we'll alternate till we end together on verse number nine of Psalm 122, and as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, please, all of us standing to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 1 of the 122nd Psalm. Ready? I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. When did the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, under the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture now tonight. And Lord, thank you already for uh, the wonderful songs we've been able to sing together tonight. From the fact that we're saved and we praise your name for that to where heaven can come down and glory fill our soul to what a day that'll be when our Jesus we shall see. And Lord, it's just, it's been good testimonies, good music, good fellowship together. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. And Father, I pray that you'll prepare our hearts now that we'll be ready to receive the message from your word this evening. Bless the special place in Jesus' name. Amen. Years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus would come again someday. If back then it seemed so real, then I just can't help but feel how much closer His coming is today. Signs of the time Our Father, we come to the preaching of the Word of God, and we thank you so much for the Bible this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that's ours to be able to have the Word of God. Lord, we can not only open it here and preach it and proclaim it, but we can hold it in our hands, and we can take it home with us tonight, and we can read and study and search the Scriptures and memorize it and meditate upon it. Lord, I pray that uh, the Word of God will be precious to us. Now, Lord, I pray you'll help me as I bring this message this evening. I believe with all my heart this is what you wanted me to do this evening. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts of people this evening. 
Lord, use the, the things we'll say tonight as only you can. And I trust you to do that. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I like Psalm 122 and verse 1, and I, it comes to my mind often. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I realized, and I think I said it in Sunday school this morning, I, David didn't have a church building to go to like we do. Uh, when we say I was glad to go to the house of the Lord, we're usually thinking about church. Uh, David didn't have a house to go to. He, he got it in his heart to build a place for God and for the worship of God and the sacrifice to God. But uh, God said, I'll leave that to your son. But David prepared in a great way uh, beforehand, even though he didn't get to build the actual house of God. But I want to talk to you just about that simple subject tonight. I love my church. I love the church. You have to understand, I, I, I grew up in church. Um, I think I, I'm sure if you went back to that little church in Hartville, Ohio that we started in, there might be my teeth marks in the nursery crib. Uh, was there ever since I can remember, and I mean Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and revival meetings, and our family uh, took a turn, as many small churches do, and had families clean the church, you know, that was there when our, it was our turn, we went down and cleaned the church, and uh, any time the doors were open, my dad just felt like we ought to be there, and, uh, and that's, that's how we grew up, and, and uh, I was saved in a Sunday night church service. Uh, I was baptized, not really in a church. The church didn't have the baptistry. We were baptized in a lake, uh, but I was baptized by a local church, amen? And, uh, and, and then I surrendered my life at church, Canton Baptist Temple in Canton, Ohio, surrendered to do whatever God wanted me to do. I met my wife at church. I remember sitting down, Brother Yoder would remember Rod Stuchel, and I uh, was sitting beside Rod looking up at the choir on a Sunday night, and I picked out Kathy Lesh at that time, and I said, I'm going to date that girl right there. And he laughed at me. He laughed at me, brother. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. And, uh, and I remember saying something to my dad, and my dad said, well, we know her parents. You want us to introduce her? I said, no, just stay out of it, Dad, all right? I'll handle it. And uh, we met my wife there, and uh, so many, think about so many major decisions in my life have been made because I was in church. And just uh, I, eight or nine weeks from now, we'll celebrate 10 years here at Bible Baptist Church, and I love my church. I just want to take a little bit of time tonight. This will be sort of more of a testimony than it will necessarily be a, a preaching or a, or a Bible study, and uh, I hope you'll indulge me a little bit this evening and let me do that, will you? Um, I love my church, and I want to tell you some reasons why I love the church, and maybe, maybe there'll be some reasons why you could love the church as well. But I love the church, first of all, tonight because of its message, because of its message. Uh, it's, it's, I love the message it has about the Scriptures. Uh, I love the fact when I came to Bible Baptist Church, I didn't have to get people to believe that God has preserved His Word for us, uh, that we have a perfect Bible. I don't just believe some of the Bible. I don't just believe most of the Bible. I believe all of the Bible. And I believe every word of this Bible. Uh, I don't think it's just out there somewhere. Uh, I believe we have a preserved word of God in the King James Bible. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to change anybody's mind on that. This church had that down. Uh, thankful to men who've come before me uh, who taught that. And I started out as a teenager uh, being taught. Um, underneath uh, Mel Sabaka at the Canton Baptist Temple about the Word of God and that if God said that we're supposed to live by every word, He'd give us every word. And uh, He did that. And so I believe we have an every word God Bible that uh, proceeded from the mouth of God. And I, I'm glad I've, I've seen churches. I've seen churches go from the King James to the New American Standard and then the New American Standard to the NIV and now they're throwing out the NIV and going to the ESV and they just... Uh, keep on changing the Bibles. I'd, I'd, I'd be concerned if I was in a church that kept changing their Bible uh, every few years. I, I, I'd be concerned about that, especially when you have a God that doesn't change. Uh, if God doesn't change, then His Word doesn't need to change. And, and as long as I'm glad we have the King James Bible, and by the way, as long as I'm pastor, that's what we'll stand on right there, the King James Bible. I like the message of the church when it comes not only to the Scriptures, but the message of church concerning sin. I'm glad that, that sin is still sin. 
You know, a lot of places, nobody wants to mention sin anymore. Nobody wants to mention wrong anymore. On a, I'm glad I'm still in a place that believes that alcoholism isn't a disease, it's sin. Uh, that, that the things that sometimes we look at as a, a mistake or a fling or a choice is, is nothing but just, it's just a sin. And, and we ought to call sin what it is. Uh, those, are, those are all things in our hearts. Somebody uh, just saw a, a thing the other day uh, on the news about a ball player now that has come out, you know, and that he's openly homosexual and talked about the, you know, the struggle within. Well, guess what? Everybody has struggle with sin. Uh, it doesn't mean you give in to it. It doesn't mean you cave into it. You say, what do you do with that struggle with sin? I give it to the one who can defeat sin. That's Jesus Christ. And, and you go, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Uh, but it's, it, listen, there's not a sin that can't be forgiven, and there's not a sin that can't be overcome. And it can be overcome. Any sin can be. I think the killing of innocent people or babies is not aborting them. It's killing them. And I think it's not. We, 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 we whitewash it and we try to make it what it is. And it's, it's amazing and it's sad in our country when we're more concerned over a lion that gets killed than innocent babies that are being killed and their body parts harvested. If it's not a baby, what are you harvesting their body parts for? It's just, uh, it's sin. But greed is a sin, and pride is a sin, and lust is a sin. And listen, God makes it plain. God said it, and that settles it. And, and we have to understand that. So I, I appreciate the, 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 the church because of the message of the uh, Scriptures, the message of sin, the message of salvation. This church for 60 years has preached faith in Christ alone for salvation. Faith in Christ alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for all these years there's never been a time never been a pastor here to my knowledge that has ever stood up and preached anything other than Christ uh, there may have been different personalities and different uh, quirks that pastors had but I tell you what they always preached the gospel and always preached that salvation was through faith in Jesus Christ there is only one Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ. And, I'm not, and listen, I'm glad I'm not only saved by Him, but I'm secure in Him. I'm thankful that when He said that I believe in Him, He said, those that believe in Me, they shall never perish. And when Jesus says, I'll never perish, my friend, I'll never perish. I'm going to go to heaven. It's signed, it's sealed, and it's delivered. It's going to happen. I'm thankful for the security we have in Christ. I'm thankful for the message of soul winning. The church through the years, through door-to-door -door and bus ministry and outreaches, has literally reached thousands of people over 60 years. Thousands of people. And now we continue to do those things, and we've added... Uh, other things in like the RU program and the radio program and the big days but the but the but the, uh, the listen it's still the same thing we're trying to reach people for Christ and you try to put as many lines in the water as you can because the more lines you have in the water the more fish you'll catch and that's that's the goal of it I like the message of the second coming the song that she just sang we still believe Jesus is coming back amen uh, we haven't changed that belief some people have changed their belief on the return of Christ. There are those who used to believe that today might be the day, and, and maybe today my Lord will come for me. And we used to sing that, that about the second coming of Christ, and some of those churches, listen, they're not singing those songs anymore because they really don't believe in the imminent return of Christ anymore. So, oh, these signs have to happen. Listen, there's no signs for the rapture of the church. Jesus could come for us right now. And it would be nothing against the Bible of him doing that. And we believe he could come in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And I'm excited about that. I'm still glad that while we don't know the day or the hour, we're not ignorant of the times and the seasons. And certainly the world stage is, is set, and I'm prepared for Jesus to come. I believe it could happen tonight. And by the way, if it happened tonight, I'd be glad to go from church. I. I'd, I'd kind of be embarrassed if I went up and I'd been in my slippers and my, you know, uh, sitting in my easy chair and uh, watching television and Jesus came back and all of a sudden I still have the remote control in my hand and I'd seen all these church people. I'd be embarrassed. 
I said, well, I thought you were supposed to be in church with us tonight, and uh, it would be an embarrassing thing. I'm thankful for the message of the church. I'm thankful for the mercy of the church. I'm thankful for the mercy of the church. Micah 6 and verse 8 talks us, but what does the Lord require of thee but to, to do justly and to um, love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? Love mercy. I'm thankful for the church that's merciful. Merciful. God has been extremely merciful to each one of us. Uh, mercy is where we do not get what we deserve. Okay? We do not get what we deserve. How many would you admit God is not giving you what you deserved at times? Would you believe that? God's been merciful to us. And if God's been merciful to us, the, the obvious thing is we ought to be merciful to one another. We ought to pass that mercy on to other people. I'm glad there's a place where it doesn't matter where you've been, just it matters what direction you're going now. It doesn't matter where you've been. You fall or you backslide, you come back through the door in repentance, you're not going to receive rebuke. You're going to be received with open arms. I'm going to tell you, tell you a true story. If I tell you anything else that's true tonight, I'll let you know too. But um, we, isn't that funny how we talk about it? Now, this is the truth. Well, is there anything else you said the truth? Yeah, it is. But um, the... This past week, there was somebody in the office, and they were talking about the T-shirts. Did you see the T-shirts that some of the folks had on yesterday? White ones, BBC, I'm going to help you. And that, those are T-shirts that Dave Paxton bought. He probably would not want everybody to know that, but he's not here. And, um, and just between us. Um, <laughs> he uh, bought those for, really, for the big days. So when we have the dinner day or we have the uh, country fair, we wear those and everybody can identify who the people are from the church. And some of the folks wore them yesterday to just for part of the serving and people could identify their current members and such. But um, when, when he saw those shirts, he said, man, I really like these shirts. He said, and I said, Dave Paxton got those. And he looked at me and said, is he back here? He said, boy, last time I was here, he said, there was a big blow up with Dave. I said, yeah, he's back. And I'm going to tell you something. When that happened that day, and some of you remember what that was, Dave just had a meltdown, man. He said, I was out in the parking lot, he said, and I was talking to Bob Wallace, just a fellow who came to see me. He said, I was talking to Bob Wallace, and Bob Wallace looked at me, and he said, if, if he'll come back, and he's repentant, we'll receive him with open arms. Amen. That's what he said he told me out in the parking lot. And Dave did come back, and Dave was sorry for what he'd done. And he asked forgiveness. And guess what? He was received back. He got mercy. See? You know why? Because we all need mercy. There's got to be a place where there's people are merciful. There's got to be a place where, it doesn't, well, don't you know what I've done? No, I don't want to know what you've done. I don't need to know what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been, where you're heading. Are you going this direction? Well, let's go. Let's go together. Forgetting those things that are behind and pressing, reaching forth on those things that are before. What a blessing to be a place where there's mercy. There's got to be a place where people are merciful and, and not judgmental. I love the church for its message, for its mercy, for its missions. I'm, I'm glad of a church that takes seriously the mandate to take the gospel to every creature. That, that I love how we've grown from 20 missionaries to 60 missionaries now. I'm not sure that I, I don't... Uh, I'll confess, I don't know my geography well enough to know whether the sun ever sets on the missionaries of Bible Baptist Church, but I'm not, I don't think it does. It's, it's an amazing thing. I'm excited about the future as the Moreland's prepare to go. And they'll be going uh, possibly in 2016. I'm excited to, uh, their, what, what God's doing in, in their ministry and how, how I've watched that uh, be so such a, a, a a fluid thing and a changing thing and thankfully he's open to the Lord's leading as God leads him in different directions. I'm excited as God leads us to, to reach unreached people groups. That, that, we're, you know, that we've, we've been able to step back and say why are, why are something like 88% of our missionaries going to the same 22 countries of the world? Is God, is God really calling almost nine, 9 out of every 10 missionaries to go to the same 22 countries? 
while, while other countries have nobody? Other countries have no one to give the gospel to them? And there are, there, are, there are thousands of people, groups, that have no Bible, that have nothing to tell them about Jesus at all? I'm thankful that we're looking at it differently. And we're saying we need to fix that. And we're going we're gonna to focus on people who've never heard. Famous pastor up in Canada, uh, Oswald Smith, I believe, he said, why should anybody hear the gospel twice when so many have never heard it once? Why should anybody hear the gospel twice when so many have never heard it once? I'm excited for missions conference coming up. I love missions conference. I'm excited. We've, we've got the questionnaires in, I think. So I'm still waiting on one. And, but, but we'll have those cards ready. And, and what an opportunity, again, to be a blessing to missionaries. I'm excited about that. Looking forward to that. I love spending time with missionaries. People who are forsaking it all to go serve God. And to reach people with the gospel. It's an exciting time. I love, I love the missions of Bible Baptist Church. I, I, get, I, don't have any, I don't have any patience with people who say, Oh, you, you, you send too money. And we've had folks, we've had people leave the church because they feel like we're sending too much money to missions. People just say, oh, those people over there, I have people over there to reach them. We need to just reach the people here. Well, we're doing, we're doing a lot to reach the people here, too. Uh, but we can't ignore the fact God said that we're to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We can't ignore that. We have to make that an emphasis as well. And I believe God honors that. I could talk about the ministries of Bible Baptist Church. I could talk about the, the monies of Bible Baptist Church, the miraculous provision that God has done. It was, it, I, could, I can't begin to tell you uh, how, how in, in almost everything that has taken place and uh, the changes that we've seen uh, in these 10 years, and, and there's just a miracle behind almost every one. Just a miracle how God provides in, in, in just unusual ways and, and from unusual places. And when that happens, you know it's God. You know it's God who does that. And I could tell you about those, and I like our meetings. At Bible Baptist Church, Sunday school and Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, and I enjoy the RU on Friday night and the RU inside at the prison and the, the men's breakfast and the ladies' meetings. Well, I don't go to those, but uh, the, the picnics, the barbecues, and the missions conference, and the banquets, and the revival meetings. I love all that. But I I could talk about all of those, and I, I won't have time tonight to do that. But let me talk about the members of Bible Baptist Church. I love my church because I love the members of the church. I mean, the saved, baptized, serving members of Bible Baptist Church. People understand that we're saved to serve. We're not saved to sit and to soak. Because when you sit and you soak, you're usually sour. And so you've got to keep serving. And that uh, keeps you... Keeps you busy for God. We had a marvelous time with the 60th anniversary celebration in the last few days. and uh, that, that kind of thing that takes place yesterday and today, it doesn't just happen. You don't just walk in and, and say, wow, look what happened. Nobody, nobody wrinkles their nose and it all poof, takes place. There's grass to be cut. There's trash to be thrown away. There's people that go to the store and purchase things and then take things back and get something else that somebody wanted that that didn't get the first time. There's rooms to clean. There's rooms to paint. Floors to paint. Decorations to put up. Where furniture to move and sweep and vacuum and windows to clean. Chairs to clean. Tables to clean. There were those who prepared food, prepared desserts, spent many hours in the kitchen. There were those who prepared the tables, and got that all ready to be decorated. There were those who set things up and those who tore things down. Those who got things out, and those who put things away. Those dishes and pans to get filled with food and then those same dishes and pans to get washed and dried and put away 
See, there's things to get prepared for and then things to clean up after. Tables and chairs to pick up and tables and chairs that have to get returned. Things like the, the they just don't just happen without some people that burn the candle at both ends. And, and, and I hope you, hope you realize that and, and understand that. I think uh, Tanya went down to the nursery. I was going to thank her for giving up her husband for the last four days. Uh, I'm sure she hadn't seen much of Bob. And I appreciate Bob all you do. Uh, things like this would never happen without Bob Reed. Uh, amazing, amazing man. And uh, we're, we're, we're privileged and honored to have him at Bible Baptist Church. Did a work tirelessly. Uh, his feet are screaming at him uh, from all the, all the work on the cement out there. And uh, just, you did a fantastic job, my friend. Just uh, extremely blessed by your hard work. And Mrs. Slaybaugh, I don't know how she does it. She's an amazing, amazing lady. I know there were at least two of the four nights that I don't know when she came to bed. She was not home when I went to bed. And uh, one, night, one night I remembered it was 1 o'clock because she woke me up. I was so pleased. But she uh, worked tirelessly. I, I know that Wednesday night when all, you all went home from church, uh, she and Heather Barham got their old clothes on and got the paint out, and they painted the entire foyer and hallway into the wee hours of the morning so that would have a fresh coat of paint for the, for the visitors that come. Friday night, we were getting ready to leave RU and it was about 10 o'clock and they start pushing stuff away from the paneling in there and I said, what, what are you doing? And then they come with paint. We're going to paint the panel. They primed it and painted that Friday night into early Saturday morning. Just, uh, just, just tirelessly. And after, by the way, after being here most of the day on Friday, usually the first one here and the last one to go. That's Mrs. Slayball. Then she did all that and had nursery this morning. You never know. Just ladies, ladies, when you opt out of the nursery. It just carries, puts more of a load on this label. You say, why don't you give that nursery to somebody else? Because if any bells had it but my wife, they'd leave the church. That's, that's the facts. And she, she handles it. When folks aren't here, when folks are short, short-handed, she just takes it. And she's probably out of church more than what she should be. Fortunately, I preach the sermon she gives me, and it works out. She's a servant. She's a servant. So, I love my church. I love its message. I love its mercy. I love its missions. And I love its members. I'm just a little bit overwhelmed as I just thought about just these last few days. All we do is put on the calendar and say, let's have a 60th anniversary reunion homecoming and you don't even know you know the cards that get printed the mailing that gets done the trips to the post office Mrs. Wallace and uh, all the things that go on that, that, that just you know what people just say okay that's what that's what the pastor wants let's make it happen and and you make it happen and I just I just need to tell you that I, I, I'm grateful and I love you and you're a wonderful church Thank you for letting me be your pastor. I love my church. God's doing some great things. Uh, Christine, who is here this morning, sat over here. Uh, she mentioned she's got a brain tumor, a tumor in her head that she's going to see a doctor with tomorrow. And several of us, I saw her talk to her and spend some time with her. Um, she came up to me at the dinner and she said, I'd, I'd like to get baptized. And I said, well, that'd be a wonderful thing. I said, but you need to know Christ as your Savior. And she goes, oh, said a few weeks ago, uh, one of your men from your church came by my house 
and it was, it was Brother Andy, and she said, he asked me if I died today, if I know I go to heaven or, or hell, and she said, I didn't know, and after he said, he took the Bible out and showed me how I go to heaven, and I, and I told him, yeah, I want to go to heaven, and said, we prayed right there, and I asked Jesus to be my Savior, and I said, well, that's wonderful, Christine, and she goes, well, I want to get baptized, and I want to go to church here. Isn't that great? And uh, it's exciting to, to see that take place. Um, Shane and Michelle, uh, they were at the barbecue yesterday, had to work today. They're from London, and uh, uh, Michelle's saved and baptized. Shane is saved but not baptized, and uh, he's coming to get baptized next Sunday, and they want to be members of the church. Uh, God's, God's working. It's great to see God work. And if we'll, listen, we plant, we water, we're faithful, God gives the increase. That's how it works. Uh, we just serve him. And we're, we're honored and we're privileged to get to serve him. And I'm glad I get to be a part of what he is doing at Bible Baptist Church. And uh, I love my church. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now tonight. Thank you for Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for these dear people in this room. I love them. I thank you for their heart for you, their desire to serve. Lord, I pray that you just help us to keep serving you. Not worry about who gets credit, not worry about who gets recognized. Just let us be servants of God. And Lord, we trust you to continue to bless, provide for our needs. Bring the folks into our church whom you want to be here and help us to keep reaching the lost for Christ. We love you. We thank you for the privilege to be part of a New Testament Baptist church. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I realize a different kind of a message tonight. But I wonder if the Lord spoke to your heart tonight some area, maybe about why you should love your church, or maybe spoke to your heart about being a servant in the church. I don't know what the Lord did or how the Holy Spirit would speak to you, but if he spoke to your heart, I'm going to finish the prayer, and you respond to him. Let's use the altar tonight. Maybe, maybe some of us should just come and kneel down and pray and say, thank you for our church. Thank you for your faithfulness for 60 years, God. And I'm thankful that we're a part of what you're doing now. Oh, I'm thankful for what went on in the past. But I really believe the best is yet to come. If the Lord tarries, I think some great things are in store at Bible Baptist Church. If we'll just stay yielded to him, I believe he'll do some great things. Father, we thank you for this evening now, and I, I trust you've spoken to hearts tonight. And Lord, we certainly want to give you thanks and give you gratitude for what you've done and what we believe you will do in our church. And I pray that tonight, Lord, you hear our prayer as we bend our knee to you, as we bow humbly before you. Lord, we trust that you'll hear our prayer and you'll receive our thanksgiving that we give to you tonight for your faithfulness to us through the past 60 years. And yet, Lord, your faithfulness that will continue until the day you call us home. Or Jesus comes for us. Father, have your way in every heart and life, please, in this invitation, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, stand to your feet if you would, please. As you stand, the pianist will play. As she plays, by the Bible sing. God has spoken to your heart. You respond to him this evening. Will you please? Make me a servant like you, dear Lord, living for others each day. Humble and meek, helping the weak, loving in all that I say. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart, here's my life, take every part. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. 
Help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Make me a witness like you, dear Lord, showing the love of the cross, sharing your word. Till all have heard, serving whatever the cause. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Here's my life, take every part. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Help me draw so close to you. That your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Give me, Lord, a servant's Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you now in prayer, and Lord, thank you for just a wonderful few days of celebration of your goodness to us, your goodness to our church over 60 years. Father, I do pray that you'll help us to be faithful to you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And I pray, Lord, we move forward. We continue to stay on task, that each of us would be faithful to serve you, and find our place, find our, our, our role to play in the body here in the church, and then fill it, and realize this is what I need to do. What an honor it is to serve you with our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us, when you saved us, to, to let us stay here, that we can live our lives for you. We love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. Dismiss us now with your care, God. Make us mindful that you go with us. Lord, make us very, very aware of your presence this week. May we please you in all we do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. Best thing I know, we do need, fellas, we have to get tables broke down. Just one second. Please. We do need some tables. Uh, the, the carts from outside need to be brought in so we can put tables on them and chairs and get them stacked up, okay? Uh, we got uh, Brother Taylor and Brother Wallace. You got me, Don? Be in charge of that, would you? Yeah. Good, uh, and then how many guys will be out there to help get that taken care of? Good. One, two, Brother Yoder. Good. All right, great. I think it'll just take not, not very long at all if you just everybody jumps in there. Uh, just make sure when you stack those chairs on the cart, they got to be really straight or they'll end up falling over. So uh, I'm sure they'll give you those instructions, all right? Oh, okay. There's a sign-up sheet for Emily Moreland's bridal shower. Ladies, hallelujah, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Some of these nowadays, you know, they're inviting men and women to come. I'm going to be honest with you, the last place I want to go is a bit, is a, anyway, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad the ladies go, I really am, but I'm glad they go, and uh, so this is um, September 5th, 
That's a Saturday, September 5th. I don't know where Mini Clark Memorial is, but that, that's a park? Okay, all right. So uh, these are down there? Okay, these are down there on the table. So ladies, you can come. I'm sure they'd love to have you, but you can go ahead and put that up. And um, well, okay. It's, okay, all right. It, it's, Lockbourne's not that big. You gotta be able to find the park, all right? It should be good. But it's down there, September 5th. Make sure you sign up. Uh, remember, uh, Jackie Van Gelder has her surgery in the morning, uh, the lumpectomy, so please pray for Jackie, and we'll try to give you updated on that, okay? All right, now we're ready to sing. Okay, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you sing. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.